Let's talk about the sim browser inside the Lucid Poker Trainer, which puts millions upon millions of GTO poker strategies at your fingertips. Let's go over everything we see on our screen right now, starting from the bottom. So down here is the node navigation. This is how you click through a hand and set up the scenario you want to study. So for example, let's say you want to know how you should play your big blind when the cutoff raises. Let's make the cutoff raise, the button and the small blind fold. Now the action is on the big blind and here's how we're supposed to respond. The big grid with all of the hands lays out the overall strategy, and if you want to dive deeper into specific hands, like let's say we want to see how Queen 8 plays, you can click it and then it will lock it in place here so you can take a closer look. If you take the node navigation to a flop, you'll reach this flop selection screen where you can type in a specific flop and then study that. So let's say you want to study King 7-2. Now we can pick a King 7-2 all the same suit. King 7-2 two-tone, so two of one suit and there's a few different combinations of that here, and there's King-7-2 Rainbow, where they're all different suits. Let's pick that as an example, and then let's make it go quickly check, bet, call on the flop to reach the turn selection screen. Now we can select the specific turn card that comes out. I'll also note that if you have a solver connected to Lucid Poker, which is totally optional, you can change your sizing settings here. This is only available on the turn and river. Jumping back to this King-7-2 flop, we're facing a bet as the big blind against the cutoff, and I'm going to go over a couple other things on the screen here. On the right side, you'll see the hand class breakdown. This concisely displays how each type of hand plays. For example, the top row here is a set, because the best possible hand on this flop is a set. We'll have this hand as the big blind 1.57% of the time, so it's about 1.5% of our total range, and we have just under 6 combinations of sets. Observe the color breakdown to see how sets play specifically. So you can see there's just a little tiny bit of dark green, which means sets very rarely take the call option. Instead, they choose to raise the vast majority of the time, and it looks like they prefer that bigger size of 8.36 big blinds. On the other end of the spectrum, we have our nothing hands, which make up just under 40% of our range here, and unsurprisingly, most of those nothing hands fold, and I'm willing to bet that the ones that do call have some sort of backdoor potential. We could see here this queen nine, when it has diamonds or clubs or hearts, which is a backdoor flush draw, it does choose to put in some chips. You can click a specific hand class to have it highlighted in the range grid, and you can click it again to go back to the overall strategy. Moving over to these buttons just above the range grid, the strategy tab is the default, which just shows you the overall strategy for each hand and the percentage at which each action is taken. If you want to dive into the specific value of each strategy, you can click strategy plus EV. This will allow you to see the expected value of each play. For example, with king seven, which is top two pair here, calling will make you about 11.7 big blinds, whereas raising will make you just a little bit more than that, 11.89, and that's why the solver chooses to raise every single time with this hand, because it simply makes more money. The other two buttons allow you to toggle normalized ranges and toggle weighted ranges. These are really only useful if you're studying late nodes in the game tree. As you progress through the game tree, certain hands will get very short as they're played less and less often in that line, so we could see, for example, here, this King Jack suited, we would have played it differently pre-flop some of the time, so we only have it a little fraction of the time. So it's very short here and it can be kind of tough to see. This magnifying glass will make it full height, so it's a little easier to tell what the frequencies are. The toggle normalize range button, which is this little up arrow, will not even do anything at this point, but if we get really deep into a hand, it will increase the height of all of the hands in the range based on the current shortest hand. I'll get to an example and then show you what that means. So now we've reached the turn here in this same hand, and you can see that all of the hands are quite short, and it's really hard to see what's happening here, right? Like, everything is so short, especially this, like, A7 offsuit, you could barely see it. The tallest hand here looks like 8-6 suited, and you can still only see a sliver of it. So if we click this toggle normalized range button, it will increase the height of all of the hands until one of them reaches the top. So this 8-6 suited has now reached the top, and now we can see a breakdown of all the hands. Again, this is quite similar to hitting the magnifying glass. It just gives you a better idea of how often you actually have each hand up until this point. Frankly, these are two pretty esoteric features. I don't think many of you will need to use them often, but it is good to know how they work. And if you ever need a reminder, just scroll over them and read the tooltip. Jumping back to the preflop nodes here, in case it wasn't obvious, we have the actions up here, which refer to the main grid. 
down here in the middle, so white equals fold, so all the white hands fold. Dark green equals call, so all of those dark green hands will call, and then this light green color is the raise, which is a 3-bet in this case. Finally, working our way to the top left, you could choose your stack size here. 200 or 100 big blinds is currently available for cash games. We have more in the works. And then one more useful button here is the open another sim browser window. This will pop open a second one of these windows, which I find really useful for comparing two different strategies. Let's say you want to compare a certain scenario for 200 big blinds versus 100 big blinds you can open up a window for each of those and then compare the strategies side by side. That way you can form some actionable takeaways for how different you're supposed to play when stack sizes increase. You could also compare different flops, like maybe you want to study how King 7-6 is different from King 7-2, and that's made much easier by using a second sim browser window. If you ever reach a particular node that you want to drill, you can click the Create Drill From Here button, and it will automatically set up a custom drill for that scenario. Like I said at the beginning of this video, the sim browser puts literally tens of millions of GTO solutions at your fingertips. So there is a lot of valuable info here. You just have to dig in and discover it. If you ever see a strategy that you don't understand and you want some help interpreting it, I highly recommend taking a screenshot and then jumping over to our Discord server. There is a sim strategy discussion group in there. You could post the screenshot and there are loads of pros and fellow members who will be happy to weigh in on why the solver is doing what it's doing. Understanding the why is really important because it allows you to effectively put these strategies into practice at the table. Now that you know what the Sim Browser has to offer and what everything means, I think it's time for you to dig into it. Good luck.